Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, today is April 4th, 2020. This is just a few days after my last news update, and uh, a lot of stuff has happened since then, surprisingly. Man, things in the flight sim world are just blowing up while all this stuff is going on in the world. So the biggest piece of the news this week now is X-Plane version 11.50 public beta 1 and it says Vulcan and Metal are here. What's exciting about this is Vulcan is the API that uh, we're supposed to be getting eventually in DCS to handle the graphics and uh, the, the workload of running the software and uh, the guys at X-Plane have come out with their version of it and I think it's very important for X-Plane because I have limited experience with X-Plane. I'm going to go out and I'm going to be just completely transparent and honest here. Uh, I played a previous version of X-Plane 11 a while ago and um, I ran it at 3840 by 1080 on an i9-9900K with 32 gigabytes of uh, PC3000 memory on a 2080 Super video card with my HOTAS gear and Track IR and I had everything cranked to the max and I got 20 frames per second. Uh, as I flew over Pittsburgh in, the, their, in their terrain, uh, I think that the highest I might have hit 27 to 28 frames per second, but the overall average was somewhere around 20 to 22 frames per second. Uh, X-Plane runs like shit, and uh, they need a boost just like DCS does, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that DCS doesn't have problems either. It does. Everybody's well aware of the problems of DCS. Um, I've wanted to take a look at X-Plane in VR, and, uh, and uh, with the Vulcan update especially now, and uh, I took the time to reach out to, to the guys at X-Plane, and uh, Austin, had he's the guy that, that runs the show over there, he sent me on to one of his guys named Meeks, I believe, and... Um, the guy was like, hey, you know, thanks for the interest. We would gladly give you a CD key that's good for two weeks. Is that something that interests you? And I had to scratch my head for a minute because, you know, I'm blunt and to the point, guys. I think you guys know that by now. So, like a lot of people out there, I can be an asshole. And uh, the first thing out of my mouth is, two weeks, are you kidding me? And then I went on to say, I've never heard of that, or I've never heard of flight simulation software that expires. Um, I said my plan was to cover X-Plane ongoing. Uh, I would love to, you know, do some coverage of X-Plane in between IL-2 and DCS. And I said, hey, you know, if you want to limit that coverage to two weeks, that's on you guys. I'll gladly take what you have to offer, though. Thanks. About another day goes by. No reply. Like, hmm. Like I said, I know I can be abrasive at times. And I tend to say those things that most people think but don't vocalize. Um, I don't think I was harsh. I don't think I was out of line. I was just being blunt to the point. So I emailed him back this morning and I'm like, uh, where are we with this? Because I would really like to look at X-Plane and Vulcan this weekend and uh, do some comparative stuff and, and make some posts and videos and you know get, get the word out there because I think it's very relevant uh, to what's going on with DCS and I think it's exciting news and now would be a great time to look at that. And uh, he replies back with, oh, sorry, thanks for your interest, but we're going to pass it this time. So, I get it. I rubbed the kid the wrong way. And I think that's the problem, because I saw the picture on the profile and looked him up. Seems like he's just a kid. And they have a kid running PR for them over there. So, I'm going to put this out there. Am I a little butt hurt by it? Yeah, I guess I am a little bit. Because, you know, I've been in this industry a long time and I've never had a hard time getting a hold of software to review. And um, the bigger issue is that this kid was just fucking unprofessional. If, if he can't communicate with people 
and take the time to have the decency to respond to the email and at that point and say, hey, sorry, I don't think this is a fit for us, and then move on. I would have respected that more than ignoring me until I emailed back again and said, hey, by the way, where are we with this? Uh, I'd like to do this stuff this weekend. So that's the bigger issue here. Um, and guys, it's their loss. It really is. Um, I would have made a video of x -Plane probably once a week in between the IL-2 stuff and the DCS stuff that I do. And um, I tried helping them out more than anything, to be honest. There's a pandemic going on, man. Uh, I don't even know if I have a job right now for much longer or how to, you know, support my family and do what I'm doing because my job may be at risk. I'm not about to pay $60 for X-Plane just to cover Vulcan. You know what I mean? I tried to help them out. It wasn't, you know, a thing about me because, to be honest, I thought X-Plane sucked anyway. Uh, I have video of it running at 20 frames per second on my hardware. You know what I mean? I know how it ran. This is fantastic news for them. And with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on the horizon, you would think these guys would really do their best to get word out there about their product and about how great it runs now compared to how it did run. So that's where I'm at with it, guys. I tried. And, uh, yeah. So I won't be doing anything with X-Plane anytime soon. Uh, I attempted to. And, uh, like I said, that kid was just pretty unprofessional. And it left a bad taste in my mouth. And I'm not going to say that there isn't people like that in this industry. Oh, I've ran into them over the years. You know, the, the, the people at Electronic Arts back in the day. And, uh, one of the people who was the PR person for EA and Jane's back in the 90s was a real fucking bitch. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to get that, you know. I, I think it's a matter of, you know, you get what you pay for when you pay somebody to handle your PR. And uh, it just is what it is, man. It, it, it's what goes on behind the scenes sometimes. And again, you, you've got to know how to handle all kinds of people when it comes to this kind of stuff. And uh, I had nothing but good intentions. And uh, I did my best to cover it more in depth. So I'm going to get off my uh, rant at this point, and we're going to leave it at that. But... We will go on to look at some other videos that were posted by Austin, and uh, I believe it's Mike Brown, his, his friend from X-Plane, and was it Laramar Research. One of the Austin's best friends that X-Plane is Michael Brown, and this guy does tons of videos. Um, he runs a company that makes uh, PCs for people who like to fly X-Plane, and they set them up tweaked for X-Plane. And um, he, this video goes in depth and really gives you an idea of what the performance is like. And in some places, there are some very major performance increases. Uh, one thing that's for sure is, you know, X-Plane is not for you if you have an AMD video card, because they're known to run shitty on that, as the graph shows. Um, on the NVIDIA stuff, there's definitely marked improvements. And again, I've seen videos from people as well talking about how it runs great. Actually, there's a video over in the corner here. It says, X-Plane 11.5 Vulcan Velvet Smooth from Luna's World over here. So if you do a search, you're going to find a bunch of stuff. In addition, Austin himself goes on to talk about um, the move to Vulcan and how it works. And this is very interesting to watch because it should give you an idea of the challenges and what the guys at Eagle Dynamics are going to have to do uh, and how it will affect the uh, systems, the processor, you know, how things are offloaded, etc., and how Vulcan can improve things. So I'm going to include this video in the uh, notes at the bottom of the video in the news bit here, like I always do. Okay, Jason Williams is the producer of the IL-2 Great Battle series and also a viewer of the channel. Thanks for watching, Jason. Um, somebody had asked on one of the forums, I wonder how they're doing cockpit reflections. It must be reflection probe cube map. You can do PBR deferred or forward. It is just a way of doing lighting in a physically corrected way. And Jason went on to answer that a form of ray tracing. Not final, many things to clean up. So it looks like 
the RTX stuff from an in NVIDIA, or a form of ray tracing, because it's said that AMD will be supporting some form of ray tracing in the future as well. So I won't say purely RTX, but IL-2 looks to be adding some form of ray tracing in the near future. As a follow-up to the F-14 news the other day when they were talking about track while scan auto, uh, the guys at uh, Heat Blur have posted a rather in-depth explanation of how it is to work. So I will put a uh, link to this in the uh, show notes and you guys can check it out for yourselves but it's rather in-depth and goes into detail and explains everything for you which is very cool of them. So the guys at Polychop, these are the guys responsible for the Gazelle and the upcoming OH58D Kiowa Warrior. Um, they are going to be hosting a stream and I believe it is on Sunday. It's happening April 5th at 2000 Zulu time. Uh, we will stream the DHS World OH58D Kaya Warrior in a mission environment for you guys on Sunday, and we hope to make the stay-at-home period a bit more enjoyable for everyone. Uh, I will include a link to this in the show notes at the bottom of the video, as usual. So it looks like the stay-at-home sale was supposed to end on Friday, I thought. They said the 3rd at midnight or something. And I logged in today to look, and it looks like all the modules are still on sale. And this is as of right now. And uh, today is Saturday, April 4th. Uh, interesting. I thought for sure all this stuff wasn't on sale anymore. Oh, and as a correction to my Christian Eagle coverage I've been doing, uh, I paid $15 for it, not $22. So for $15, bucks, that's pretty freaking awesome. There's a lot of fun to be had here. The Tomcat is on sale for $63.99. This by far is the best module in DCS world, hands down, if you ask me. Uh, others may say otherwise. Others will say the Hornet. But oh, look at this. The Hornet is $39.99. Steel, also well worth the price of admission. The uh, Harrier, $34.99, half off. So the majority of the stuff is still half off. If you haven't jumped in and did your part to support Eagle Dynamics during this sale, you still have a chance to do that. And uh, I can't recommend enough how awesome the Tomcat is. I think in terms of modules, I would have to say it goes Tomcat, Hornet, um, maybe Harrier next, and then F-16, and then Mirage 2000. Mirage 2000 is a fantastic plane, too. So much fun to be had here, you know. The World War II stuff doesn't impress me that much. I'm still trying to get the hang of it. Um, I tend to have more fun with IL-2 than I do DCS in World War II. Um, but again, their Warbirds are nice, you know. They're, I mean, if you want the most realistic warbirds, they have them in DCS. So take a look, guys. And uh, I don't know exactly when this is going to end, but it's still 50% off. And that's kind of good for everybody. So as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button. And until next time, guys.